these agreements with someone who was very boldly claiming that when the ice melts in a glass of water, the level of the water will actually drop. Of course, this is not true. In accordance with Archimedes' principle, the water level will actually remain the same since the displacement of the water is entirely based on the mass. I've heard people make this mistake before because they reason that the density of the ice is less than that of the water, so when the ice turns into water, there will be less volume. Of course, they are not considering that because of Archimedes' principle, the ice will be supported and buoyed up by the water, leaving some of it above the water line and therefore not accounted for in volume. It then became of interest to me to model this event mathematically to show that the height of the water will not change even though we already know that this is true through observation. So the first step in deriving our model is to do a geometric analysis. This is a representation of the glass of water with the ice floating in it. We're modeling the glass as a perfect cylinder and we're modeling the ice cube as a perfect cube to keep things simple and it has no bearing on the problem. The H represents the height of the water and the V2 represents the volume of the ice sticking out of the water while M2 represents that mass. H2 represents the height of the ice sticking out of the water and H1 represents the distance of the ice underneath the water while M1 represents the ma that mass. MW represents the mass of the water while VWI represents the volume of the water and the ice underneath the water. A2 represents the surface area of the ice cube and A1 represents the cross-sectional area of the glass. The total volume equals VWI plus V2. VWI equals H times A1 and V2 equals H times A2 so we can rewrite that. Now rearranging that we have our first equation which will be H equals V minus H2 A2 over A1. Now looking at volume in terms of mass and density, we have volume equals M1 over density of ice plus M2 over the density of ice plus MW over the density of water. That gives us equation 2. H2 equals V2 equals M2 over the density of ice. That's equation 3. Now we can plug that right back into equation 1. And with a little bit of work uh, and some canceling out, we come up with equation 4, which is the basis of our model. And that is H equals M1 over the density of ice plus MW over the density of water all over A1. That's our equation 4. So the next thing to do is apply the X term to equation 4, which will represent the amount of ice lost uh, when it's melting at, uh, at a particular given interval of time. It's between 0 and 1. So we apply that to the main terms in the equation. The first term is m1 over density of i times 1 minus x. The second term is 1 over the density of water times the mass of water plus this quantity m1 plus m2 times x and all that is over a1. That's equation 5 and that is the basis for our, our model. So the next step is to get some of our terms in the equation in, in a manner that we can use. So uh, we start with Archimedes' principle, and mig equals the buoyant force. We get that from the Archimedes' principle. Rewriting fb, we get density of water a2h1g equals mig. The g's cancel out, and we can get h1 uh, and break that down into very simplistic terms. It winds up being uh, 0.92 vi over a2. And we can actually get that in even more simple terms because A2 is equal to VI uh, to the two-thirds power. So rewriting all that, we get 0 0.92 times the cube root of VI as our H1 term. So to get the H2 term, we can say H2 equals S minus H1, and that can be rewritten as the cube root of VI minus 0 0.92 times the cube root of VI, which winds up being H2 equals 0 0.08 cube root of VI. So now we can use the H1 and H2 terms to get our M1 and M2. We write V1 equals H1 times S squared. We plug in the H1 and rewrite the S squared terms in, term in terms of uh, uh, volume of ice. 
we wind up with m1 equals 0.92 vi times rho i. Rho i is density of ice. And rewrite that as m1 equals 0.8464 vi rho w. So m2 winds up being 0.08 volume of ice times density of water. So we can make a prediction to further strengthen our model and just verify that everything is correct. Uh, assuming that the initial height equals the final height, we can rewrite that in these terms. Uh, M1 over density of ice plus MW over the density of water all over A1 equals MI over MW over rho W all over A1. Um, so doing the math, we wind up with M1 equals MI over 1.087, and that is our prediction. So now we can take a look at the code, and it's just a function where we're plugging in uh, the volume of the water and the side of the ice cube, one side of the ice cube. I've set up an error where you can't make one side of the ice cube be bigger than the diameter of the glass, which I've set as uh, hard-coded within the code. Now you'll see that this is just some calculations. Um, we're setting the initial height. Uh, we're, we're going through some of the uh, here we're just defining some of the things that we've already done uh, previously in our derivation. Uh, right underneath the mass of ice calculation there you'll see the prediction. Uh, so it, it's saying that uh, if the prediction is true, just display that it is true. I've set up a while loop. So this is an iterative process that it goes through until the mass or the volume of the ice is zero. Now I couldn't get it, this is a very simple calculation, so it would go to infinity if I didn't terminate it by, by coming up with this if statement here, you'll see. Uh, so it's not a perfect model, but it's pretty darn close. And then it just displays the final water height and the, the error. So these are the runs. We have, you, you'll see that the, these are some different inputs and this is the initial height you'll see is the same uh, as the final height in every case uh, with the error being zero or practically zero so it works so some of you may be wondering how this all affects climate change well the ice floating in the water such as that at the North Pole is not going to have effect on the ocean height but ice on land such as Greenland is going to be a problem so yes we do have to worry about this